So I had a vaccine at about 11 a.m. and I was fine till around 6 p.m. the same day. Hello Cherry Dears! Hello Cherry Dears! Welcome back to another episode on this channel. My name is Debbie and I have missed you guys so much. It's just been a minute here, you know. But yeah, I got some time off work and I'm here to talk to y'all. <laughs> so anyways, without too much paparazzi, let's get into today's discussion. Oh, just a minute. This is how it went down. <laughs> so this is how it went I'm down. Going to on the day of the vaccination, I was with a colleague, so we'd had we done morning rounds on the on the ward, so we were just taking a break, and then she talked about the vaccine. I was like, okay, yeah, so you just threw the vaccine in school, but they just giving it like just a stone throw from where we were. So I was like, okay, let's just go take this vaccine. <laughs> So we went, um, it was it was a pretty smooth um, process. We went, we initially they had sent us a link to um, register online. So you have to register online and all that, choose the, the place where you want to take the vaccine and all that. So we did that and then um, we went for the vaccination. So the officials attended to us, um, gave us another form to fill. So we filled the form and then they also asked us for our code that's the registration code that usually you get online when you register um the access for that and then we gave it to them and then they did a process and so after that the next thing you're going to do is um or rather we were called to sit at the vaccine side <laughs> gosh so the vaccine is given to you you get the vaccine on your left arm your upper arm um so you're not supposed to rub in the vaccine once it's injected you, just, you don't even press it in just just hold it um, for some time. At least the nurse that gave me that, gave me a vaccine actually did that. So we're asked to wait for like 15 minutes within the, oh, just to be sure that there were no reactions or any issues. And then after that, we went, or we left rather. <laughs> now let me tell you what happened after that. <laughs> So um, the reason why I actually even decided to take the vaccine was the fact that um, I'm a medical doctor and I work um, in close contact with patients. So we meet a lot of patients, we see a lot of patients day to day. So it's, you don't know who you're going to meet. So I'm amongst the high risk group of people for COVID. So or for yeah, contracting COVID. So it's just necessary that I take it, do all I can do to protect myself. The second reason is that I feel that this is going to be a re an international requirement soon, you know, because people are, you know, measures have been put in place concerning the protection against COVID and you know how it affected the economy of countries and all that. So I see or I feel that um, in the long run, sooner than later, you know, countries will be expecting a proof of vaccination, a proof of some sort of prote protection from especially people coming into their country, you know, to so that to be able to protect their own citizens. It's just the same way like with polio, some countries where you're traveling, especially when you're from Nigeria, when you're from West Africa most times, they ask you for a proof of vaccination against polio, against yellow fever and all that. So COVID, I feel like, will become one of those things that you have to show a proof of vaccination against. And since it's free now and um, it's just at my doorstep, so it just, just made so much sense to just do it at once and get done with it so that you get, you know, I can just know that this is, oh, I've gotten over with this. Now, prior to this, I had, um, um, the means of protection we used here was um, definitely the general one of washing your hands, sanitizing, face mask, and um, social distancing. 
the truth is that social distancing did not work well from my experience because you're working with patients i had taken samples from patients who were um, who's um was it called COVID, COVID RDT test later came back po came back positive. Oh, why? <laughs> yeah, so I taken samples from this patient, and the truth is, I never went to do a COVID test. I just looked out for symptoms and made sure I took vitamins. Um, then at a point, I started the ivermectin um, regimen, which was provided by the hospital where I practice currently. So I did ivermectin. I was supposed to take two doses, so I just had one dose thus far before the COVID vaccine stuff came up. So that's what I had done basically. And of course, <laughs> to crown everything up, I kept praying for protection because you see, there's there's much you can do. Most times we met, we saw patients without proper PPE as personal protective um, equipment so aside the mask and the sanitizers and then if you i say mask and sanitizer mask and yeah mask and that was all then of course you wear hand gloves if you're going to attend a patient take um samples from patients and all that but we come in contact with patients with um what's it called we speak with them sometimes you have to keep reminding this patient put on your mask put on your mask put on your mask and some of them your mask are not even like really you know it's not up to par you know the uh, preventive measures are not up to par but there's nothing much you can do because you have to attend to these patients and we weren't provided proper uh, you know um protective equipment so we had to do what we got to do we had to do rather than just keep praying and trusting god that um it won't get worse i had colleagues who got covid who had to stay in isolation who had to take treatment and all of that so i just kept praying so I, it was just the right thing to do to get the vaccine despite you know all the concerns and all the fears and stories surrounding the vaccine yeah. i had concerns because i had heard stories about the vaccine and all of that but with a bit of medical knowledge that i have um, of course i understand a bit how vaccines work and i'm going to talk about it soon so i didn't have much um fear. the fear wasn't enough to stop me from taking the vaccine because I knew that it was a protective um, step and I just prayed about it and I also read a bit about the vaccine and especially the brand that were, being, were to be given at the time. So it was an informed decision I made. So yeah, that's that. Yeah, so, so I had a vaccine at about 11 a.m. and I was fine till around 6 p.m. the same day. <laughs> So I had um, finished um, my work and then went in to get some rest. I ate and all that. So when I woke up, gosh, I was myself. I knew it was the vaccine that was working, but I wondered why it took so long. <laughs> gosh, like my body was heavy. My body was hot. Like I had a very, very bad fever. My skin was a bit very sensitive. Actually, that happens whenever I have fever. I hardly do, but whenever I do, I any touch, just my skin just gets like really sensitive. So it was pretty bad. Then I was having headache. So um, that was my experience. The um, side effects, even from what I got from other colleagues of mine who had the vaccine also. So it's basically fever, headache, and myalgia which is also known as body ache or muscle ache anyways so those are the three main things some people had like um what's it called cold sores they're called cold sores right yeah the sores that come out the side of the um lip and i think some people had eye reaction if i'm not mistaken oh no not eye reaction some people had um injection site reaction so yeah the heaviness of the arm and also some people had itching uh, or pepper sensation and the site of the injection so i had the heaviness of the arm later actually happened that so all, it seems like all my symptoms came in in the evening so that's like how many hours after i had the vaccine so yeah so i knew it was a vaccine anyway so i wasn't like so scared about just spraying that okay lord i really want to get better because i don't like this like it's just the feeling of being bed reading like just being in bed i couldn't even get up even to go ease myself i was that weak so i just stayed in bed and all that so i knew i had to sleep it in again so i slept till the next morning and by the next morning when i woke up i was feeling better i was feeling better like the fever had gone down but my head still ached badly 
and I still felt really weak. So I just called in on the hospital that I wouldn't be able to come to work that day. It was a Friday, so um, I had to stay off work because I wasn't able myself at all. Yeah. So there was my experience. <laughs> Maybe wondering if this vaccine is not supposed to be harmful or if it's not supposed to cause me any issues, why would I have a fever? Or why these reactions that um, occur with the vaccine? Now, the first thing I want you to know that the reactions, the fever, the headache and myalgia, which are the most common reactions of this COVID-19 vaccine, is not peculiar to COVID-19 vaccines. Mostly in children, when children are given vaccines, they have these reactions, they have the fever especially now i'm going to explain why you would have fever on getting a vaccine now first thing i want you to know that vaccines act by stimulating the immune system so the immune system is going to be stimulated to produce what we call antibodies these antibodies are like soldiers that fight against infection how they do this is to recognize the antigen on a microbe so it could be a virus it could be a bacteria it could be a helmet but in this case it's a virus it could be other things also but in this case it's a virus so the antigen is like a part of the virus in this case that the immune system of the body is able to recognize and say hey that's something alien hey that's not part of this place what's this doing there let's go attack it right so this same antigen is usually present in vaccine but usually it's in a less virulent form that means it's not supposed to cause the actual disease so the difference between a uh, an antigen in a vaccine and an antigen in um the actual disease or actually infection is that the actually infection the actual infection we actually cause actually stimulate an immune response but also go on to cause the disease to cause an infection because the body was not prepared for this kind of infection before but in a vaccine the harmful part has been killed in quotes so that it just stimulates the immune reaction but does not go on to cause the disease in the person who's taking the vaccination so why the fever now when um, stimulation of the immune system occurs usually it's accompanied by fever now fever is caused by something bigger substances we call pyrogens pyrogens are fever inducing substances now they can be endogenous that's within the body that's from the body or they can be exogenous from outside so exo exogenous pyrogens are going to be endotoxins of um, bacteria these endotoxins go on to stimulate the body's thermostat and cause fever then exogenous i'm sorry endogenous um pyrogens are substances called cytokines mostly one of which is entirely one so cytokines are usually released in response to immune stimulation and they do the work of trying to wake up the bodies the rest of the body's immune system tell it what to do you know put everyone like divide the work okay you go process this process that in order to make antibodies and keep the body aware of these invaders so when this entelechian is released it will stimulate the body's thermostat and cause fever but it's called endogenous because it is from the body why exogenous is the endotoxin of a bacteria which is coming from outside these are medical and <laughs> biological okay biological and chemical terms also but I'm just trying to um, explain to you why you'd have a fever when you get a vaccine I hope you understand that now the associated pain that comes with the vaccination side effect of vaccination it's recommended that you could take acetaminophen that's paracetamol you can take that to help relieve the fever and the pain but um, you're advised um, against taking diclofenac because of the adverse effect that has been associated with it 
so i hope this helps in my case actually i took nothing i didn't take any pain relievers or any pain any medication for fever i just decided to wait it out because i knew it was an immune thing and it would resolve so by the evening of the following day i was much better and able to go about my activities so i hope this helped there are various reports about the vaccine that's the covid19 vaccine including this brand so um it's advised that you make an informed decision um what i have shared here is my personal experience of taking the vaccine sometimes people may have different reactions and you know different experiences but based on my experience and what i also garnered from my colleagues who took the same vaccine i've shared based on that so please kindly do make an informed decision on what you want to do thank you i wish you all the best stay safe so guys my beloved charities thank you so much for joining me on this episode i hope you enjoyed it i hope you learned one or two things from it so don't be scared of taking the vaccine that's my conclusion you're going to be exposed to people you know this thing is most likely you know going to be around for some time so well take good care of your health also and let your immune system you know be okay yeah so that'll be all for now thank you so much once again i hope you enjoyed this so till next time i am debbie bye